Well, hello and thank you for joining me uh, on this video. This is a sort of a video update of a video I had done earlier showing how to cut these little rounds out on a drill press instead of a, using a bandsaw. These little round pieces I use for putting the end caps on my spindle turnings and also for providing a place to drive the turning on the lathe so that then I can cut it off when I'm done and I don't see any blemish from the spindle uh, turning process. Here's an example where I have this tool handle blank ready and you can see the rounds that I have here. I'll engage the headstock and tailstock on this point here which is at the center of the blank. And then when I'm done, this will be the end cap for the handle. And this part here will simply be cut off and uh, cleaned up with sandpaper. So, the previous video showed cutting the blanks out on the drill press. And that's all well and good if you've tried it with a standard uh, hole saw like this one. You may have encountered the fact that you'll go in and you have to take a bite and back out and take a bite and back out because as the shavings pile up in between these teeth, once you're past the surface, they really have no place to go. These hole saws are principally made for metal cutting where the shavings coming off will be much smaller and they'll also be flooding this with coolant and lubricant so that the shavings will probably flow out of that cutting area. What I'm making this video for is to show you a quick and easy solution to that problem which also has the added benefit of getting the most out of the stock that you're cutting the rounds from. All you have to do is position this so that the outer edge of this cutter goes to the outside of the wood that you're cutting it from. Let me pull you in a little bit tighter here and I'll show you how I'm positioning this. You can see how I'm making it so that the cutting teeth are going to extend, extend out beyond the surface here. Only one place is necessary, but if you get two, that's even better. So, let's clamp this in position and I'll show you how this works. That's another point to keep in mind too, is that you never run a hole saw like this on a drill press without clamping the stock. What I've done with this hole saw to make this process work is I've taken the center drill out. And you can see through that hole there is no center drill. There's nothing coming down here. So if you try and push this down into the wood without it being clamped and just holding it by hand, you're probably going to lose that battle. Now let me turn the drill press on. You can see it's going fairly slow. Watch the area where the chips have a place to exit. See how clean and smooth that was. And uh, I'll pull you back out here away so you can see um, when I take this out of here it comes out very cleanly and you, you will have some fuzz in the bottom but that's not uh, any concern because I'm going to turn that off anyway. But now I've got a nice little blank uh, round and uh, I'm ready for my next cut. Always keep that surface outside of the cut area at some point so that you can see how the shavings have a place to go. And that will keep the, uh, the teeth clear and not have this bind up, get super hot, or start smoking on you. Which if you've tried it otherwise, you probably have encountered that. You also notice, run the bands, uh, pardon me, <laughs> the drill press at a slow speed because you're cutting wood here with uh, teeth made for cutting metal, which means that they're fairly close together relative to the job, and you want to run them therefore at a slow RPM. Uh, that's my update, and uh, hopefully you can put it to good use, and uh, happy turning.